things we pray for compared to what the Bible says we should pray for. Now, it would not be possible for me to give you an exhaustive list of everything in the Bible uh, that talks about prayer. <coughs> I'll talk about some that I think are of utmost priority. If you were here at church on September 11th, you heard my daughter Mary Beth sing a song called Blessings by Laura Story. Um, I'd like to remind you of what the words to that song are. Okay? The song goes like this. We pray for blessings. We pray for peace, comfort for family, protection while we sleep. We pray for healing, for prosperity. We pray for your mighty hand to ease our suffering. And all the while you hear each spoken need, yet love is way too much to give us lesser things. What if your blessings come through raindrops? What if your healing comes through tears? What if a thousand sleepless nights are what it takes to know you're here? What if trials of this life are your mercies in disguise? We pray for wisdom, your voice to hear. We cry in anger when we cannot feel you near. We doubt your goodness. We doubt your love. As if every promise from your word is not enough. And all the while we hear each desperate plea. And long did we have faith to believe. When friends betray us, when darkness seems to win, we know that pain reminds this heart that it is not this, that this is not, this is not our home. It's not our home. What if your blessings come through raindrops? What if your healing comes through tears? What if a thousand sleepless nights are what it takes to know you're near? What if my greatest disappointments or the aching of this life is a revealing of a greater thirst this world can't satisfy? What if trials of this life the rain, the storms, the hardest nights, the <coughs> in the sky. Now, I don't know what's, what's, uh, you're putting on your list, or what's going to end up being on your list. I'm not going to see your list, or I want to see your list, nobody else is going to see it. But I'm going to make a few educated guesses. If you're a parent, I bet you your children are on that list. If your job, I'll bet you that's on there. If you're having financial troubles, I bet you something to do with that is on there. If you have unsafe family, I bet you that's on there. I'd like to compare what's on our list with what the Bible has to say we should pray for. Psalm 122, 6 says this. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May those who love you be saved. I get just a little bit nervous anytime I hear word out of Washington, D.C. that our country is considering not supporting Israel. God says those who love Israel will be secure. I want to take a minute do what the Bible says and pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Let's do that. Lord, as your word says, in a place that seems like it's never known peace, we pause this morning and we ask for the peace of Jerusalem. And I pray that we, as a country, would continue to love and support your people. In Israel. In Christ's name. Amen. Matthew 5.44 tells this. says this. I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. I hope you're not going through any kind of persecution. And I know what the natural reaction is when we are persecuted. We want to strike back, don't we? We want to get even. We want to defend ourselves. We want to make sure that that person pays for what they did. It's not in there. Love your enemies. I like to think I have no enemies, don't you? Serious. Enemies? What do you think of when you think of an enemy? Somebody that's gunning for me, right? Either literally or figuratively. Yeah, I like to think I don't have any enemies. I realize not everybody in the world is going to like me. Back to life. But I like to think I don't have any enemies. But maybe I do. And when they show themselves as an enemy, the Bible 
says, in fact, Jesus talking, love those people, pray for those who persecute you. Let's pause for a minute and pray for those folks. If you've got somebody in your life that's persecuting you, pray for them. <coughs> Lord, apart from you, I can't love my enemies. Can't even like them. But I pray for them today. If there's anybody who considers himself my enemy. For anyone here that's being persecuted, give each of us the strength to pray for those who are bringing about that persecution. Amen. In Luke 9, 38, it says this, Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Jesus was talking there, and he said the fields are white under harvest. In other words, there's a lot of people out there ripe to respond to the gospel. What we're lacking is people to get the word out. And you talk to any pastor at any church, in any place, I don't care what size the church is, I don't care how many people there are there, a lot or small, and every pastor would answer this question the same way. Could you use some more help? Yeah. But you know, this is not just workers in the building. Because, as far as I can tell, the harvest fields are where? They're outside, right? What we need are people that are willing to harvest those that are right to receive the gospel. In other words, just share it. Just tell it. I want you to think of it like this. Remember the blind man who was healed? And he was called before the Sadducees and the Pharisees, all the religious leaders, and they said, God has healed you. He's a bad man. He's of Satan, isn't he? He's of the devil. He's not from God. And what was his answer? Hey, <coughs> I know. I know this, though. I was blind, and now I see. He didn't have any Bible college education. He didn't have any scripture memorized. He didn't have the, the uh, four laws, spiritual laws memorized. He didn't have a plan of salvation memorized. He knew one thing. Jesus had done something miraculous in his life, and that's what he had to tell people. And you know what? That is the only qualification we need. To be a worker in the harvest field. You don't have to have any kind of education, knowledge. You have to have been changed by Jesus, though. Let's pray for workers. Lord, your word says the fields are white in the hearts. In other words, they're right. There are lots of people out there waiting to hear the word. We need workers. Those workers are us that know you. And then we know you. We have the only qualification and the most important qualification that is needed to work in the field. And that is to tell others what Jesus has done for us. Send us workers into your hearts. Amen. Luke 6.28 says this. Oh, here we go again. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. I have been cursed at, and I have been mistreated. And it's hard. It's hard when people are telling other people things about you that aren't true. And what is our natural reaction? We're going to set everybody straight, right? Right? Want to go to every Egypt? Like, Listen, I want you to know so and so said this, I want you to know it's not true. This is the way it really happened. If we did that, we would be spending all our time doing that and no time working in the harvest field. There's one thing I have learned. I'm, I'm going to tell you, I'm a different person than I was 30-some years ago in the ministry. There's 
One thing I have learned. Be quiet, and the truth will eventually all come out. I don't have to run around and defend myself for everybody who's mistreated. The truth will eventually come out. <coughs> Bless those who curse you. <coughs> when we lived in Meadville, we had a church parking lot that if we parked the cars really tight, we could get about seven cars in. <laughs> I had a neighbor that had three cars. And they loved to leave all their cars in the church parking lot every Saturday night. And so every Sunday morning, <laughs> yes, I wonder if you'd mind moving your cars so I could get people to park for church. <sighs> well, you know, I kind of complained to some folks in the church, and one of the persons spoke up and said, I think we should start to pray that those folks win the lottery. <laughs> I said, why? God will bless them.
better I have gotten to know my wife over the years, the more I know the things that she wants and the things that make her happy.
to anoint them with oil and pray for them. If they have any sins, they'll be forgiven. They'll be raised up and they'll be healed. So it's in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we anoint you with oil. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we anoint you with oil. For healing for your mind, for your body, for your spirit, for whatever you need. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we anoint you with oil. And ask through the power of the Holy Spirit that you would know the healing that you need today. That as you confess your sins, you would be forgiven. You would know the release that comes. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Be seated. <coughs> Back in your seat. Thank you. 